an authority on royal relations argued that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's unexpected trip to Jamaica was insensitive given the king's hospitalization and the country's efforts to do away with the monarchy. For the glittering premiere of the new Bob Marley movie One Love last night, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex took a plane from their pound 11 million California property to Kingston. Given that Jamaica is moving forward with preparations to sever relations with the British monarchy and hold a vote later this year, their visit has drawn attention. In London, some 5,000 miles away, Harry's father, King Charles III, was getting ready for a prostate operation after a major health crisis that was revealed last Wednesday, while his sister-in-law Kate Middleton was in the hospital following abdominal surgery. The Jamaican Prime Minister's smiles with Harry and Meghan, on the other hand, were a different vibe to the last time we saw PM Andrew Holness with members of the royal family, according to Sussex cheerleader Amid Scubby. He was alluding to the time in March 2022 when he informed Prince, William, and Kate that he intended to abolish the monarchy. The Sussexes also took pictures with Jamaica's Minister for Legal and Constitutional Issues, Marlene Malahu Fort, who declared last year that the country was ready to put its future in Jamaican hands and that Jamaica might soon sever ties with the monarchy. It appears Harry and Meghan will turn up at the opening of an envelope these days, royal expert Phil Dampier remarked, while other onlookers waited for a word from the Sussexes over Charles and Kate's hospitalization. There would be nothing improper with their attending a movie premiere in normal circumstances. However, this is a bit disrespectful given that his father is having surgery, and Jamaica is voicing its desire to abdicate the monarchy. Naturally, the royals have always maintained that each nation should determine whether to become a republic or not. However, I have always found it really tragic that Barbados removed the Queen without a referendum when she was at the end of her life. Jamaica will hold a referendum, but they'll probably end up doing things their own way. Mr. Dampier went on to say that Harry had pleasant memories of Jamaica, citing a visit in 2012, when he won a run against Usain Bolt. But he went on it's obvious the couple felt comfortable. However, it conveys a message that they back that nation even though they are too busy to publicly support the King and Princess of Wales. Even while they may have done so in private, they aren't making a point of expressing that they want a reconciliation and their presence just serves to highlight how different their lives have become. During his 2012 Diamond Jubilee tour of the Caribbean, Harry visited Jamaica, where he was spotted dancing to Marley's classic song One Love, with a sizable crowd. He also got to know Rita Marley, the late musician's widow. Additionally, Harry and Meghan attended the wedding of Tom Skippy Inskip, a friend of the Duke, to Laura Hughes Young in 2017, prior to their November engagement. And in 2011, Megan Webb Trevor Engelson, for the first time, on a secluded Jamaican beach. Bob Marley, 36, passed away from cancer in 1981. When the Happy Duke and Duchess showed up at Kingston's Carib Theatre last night, people took notice as they shook hands and posed for pictures with the performers. Harry, 39, and Megan, 42, posed with Paramount, Pictures, and Nickelodeon. President and Chief Executive Brian Robbins and his wife Tracy James. This was noteworthy since the Sussexes are looking for new sources of income because their contracts with Spotify and Netflix, which are worth pound 15 million and pound 80 million respectively, expire in June of next year. Harry was spotted giving a hug to Ziggy Marley, the 55 year old artist who created One Love and is the son of Bob and Rita Marley with Londoners Kingsley Ben Ader as Bob Marley and Lashana Lynch as Rita Marley, as well as James Norton as producer Chris Blackwell. The movie also features a strong showing of British talent. Alongside Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness and his spouse Juliet, Meghan and Harry who announced in January 2020 that they were leaving the royal family were present at the premiere. During a visit by Prince, William, and Kate in March 2022, Mr. Holness declared that Jamaica was moving on and accepting its future as an independent nation. 
He later referred to the country's transition to a Republican model as inevitable. In March of last year, Mr. Halmus reiterated this, stating that Jamaica was moving ahead with its intentions to remove Charles as its head of state and that ambitious timelines were in place to move the country closer to the road to republic. A committee for constitutional revision was also announced by him to aid in the transition. Following in the footsteps of Barbados, Jamaica, a former British colony, has started the process of severing relations with the British monarchy. Due to its history of slavery and plantation economy, many Jamaicans lived in poverty, while some Britons became affluent. After Jamaica was taken from Spain in 1655, the country that had transported the first African slaves to England, the English gained control of the island nation. Although it became independent in 1962, it remained a member of the Commonwealth and kept the British monarch as head of state. The enduring bonds were maintained by waves of immigrants to Britain and a deep love for Queen Elizabeth II, who ruled at the time of independence. Before her passing in September 2022, however, Republican enthusiasm was spreading throughout the Caribbean. In 2021, Barbados abrogated its monarchy. Although Trinidad and Tobago and Dominica are already republics, Antigua and Barbuda, Belize, and the Bahamas have all shown a desire to sever their connections with the British monarchy. Charles became the head of state of not just Britain, but also 14 other realms, including Canada, Australia, and Jamaica, after his mother passed away. According to Jamaica's constitution, a simple majority in a nationwide referendum, and a to thirds majority, in both the elected and nominated houses of parliament, are needed for the country to become a republic. It will need a two-thirds majority of voters in a referendum if it receives a two-thirds majority in the elected house, but only a simple majority in the nominated house. The complaints of Jamaicans have been compounded by the Windrush Affair of 2017, which saw the detention or deportation of hundreds of immigrants to Britain after they had been there for years. Protesters carried posters asking, that William and Kate apologize for slavery during their visit in 2022. William also expressed his deep sorrow at a formal state dinner. However, he did not issue a formal apology, nor did his father, Charles, who later that year addressed Commonwealth leaders, expressing his personal sorrow at the suffering of so many. Charles added that it was up to the Commonwealth countries to determine their own constitutional systems acknowledging the growing Republican sentiment in several of them. Between the 15th and the 19th centuries, some 600,000 Africans were transported to Jamaica as slaves to labor on plantations of bananas, cotton, and sugar. In addition to participating in the Atlantic slave trade, the British government paid plantation owners for the labor they had lost when slavery was prohibited in 1834.